Hi, today I'd like to talk about a kick drum rack that allows you to overlay different kick drums. So what you see here is the finished drum rack containing just a kick, except that the chain, the kick chain here contains two kick instrument racks. If I open those up, it contains a kick sampler, which has if I select all of them, this one has 50 kick drums in it. If I select the other one, this one has 127 kick drums in them. And then uh, through macros, you can select one of the kick drums in each rack, which then results in a new unique kick sound. So let's first have a quick listen. I hope that what I just did was a bit clear, but if not, it should become clear once we create this uh, drum rack. Now, of course, to create a kick drum rack, we need kick drum samples. And the ones that I used are from Angular Momentum and Black Octopus Sound, the Monster Kicks version 1. Uh, this sample pack has 128 kick samples. You can download a demo pack from their website which contains uh, 10 kick drums and uh, Angular Momentum kick drums. Uh, those I created myself using a free plugin from Angular Momentum called KickLab. And the plugin already comes with 60 presets but you're of course free to create your own which is uh, pretty easy to do and once you have created uh, a kick you can then create a MIDI clip add a note to it, freeze the track and then copy it over to a new audio track using control drag crop the file or maybe I think yeah, crop the file then look into your current project in the samples processed freeze oh no it's going to be in crop then look for the sample which I think is yep yeah, that one so you can go ahead and do that for as many kick samples as you want once you have decided on which samples to use it's time to add them to a sampler instrument gonna grab a template like that go over to my samples and add all of them make a few quick adjustments set the scale to none and I think that's about it. Set the range. Now, most important is the selection. Now, what I want to do later on is make the zero selection play nothing. So I'm going to start all the samples at one instead of zero. Then going to the end grab all of them and make the selection 50 because I have 50 samples then right click and distribute the ranges equally now I have one sample at each uh, location 
let's now group this sampler and make it a regular group, not a drum rack, so a regular instrument rack. Group to instrument rack. Open this up. Find the selector. Right click on it. And map to macro 1. This is going to be our selector. Right now it goes all the way up to 127 because I only have 50 samples. I want to limit it to 50. Starting at 0 because 0 will not select any sample at all. Let's now quickly test this. Add a note to C3 on each beat. Make sure we make a selection of course. And then play. Okay, so far so good. Let's do one more thing and that's add a macro for the volume for this kick drum so that we can control the different uh, kick layers uh, separately. And while I'm at it, let's rename a few things. Call this kick one. You can call this whatever you like. So rename this to, oops. Kick one selector, kick one volume, okay. So now we need to add a second kick and we don't have to do the whole thing all over again. What we can do here is simply duplicate the one that we already have and rename it to kick two. Then grab all the samples in there and simply delete them. Go back to our library, find the other kicks that we want to add, and there's 127 of them. Well, 128. I'm gonna grab 127, add all of them, do the same as before. Set the range, set the scale to zero, then go over to the selector again, offset this by one, then grab all of, no, I don't need to do anything here because I have 127 of them, then right click and distribute the ranges equally, and we're done. Except that we, uh, because we duplicated the first gig, the macros in our second kick are also mapped to the same macros here, which is not what we want. What we want to do is have separate controls for each kick. So with kick 2 selected, right click on the selector and unmap from selector 1 and then map it to macro 3. Like that. So we now have a separate control do the same for the volume. Unmap it from kick 1 volume, right click, map to control 4 and rename everything. So this is kick 2. Voila! So you now have a kick instrument rack with two kick drums in it and you can play none if you put this at 0, 1 or both of them and then of course mix their volumes as desired. Now if you think about this a little bit more you realize that you can only mix samples from kick 1 with samples from kick 2 but let's say you want to combine two different kick samples that are both in the kick 1 uh, chain. So you can simply duplicate kick 1 again and add the macros to different controls so unmap first and then map this to 5, go into the selector, unmap it from 1 and then map it to 5. So now you have kick 1 twice but with separate controls. 
Of course you can do the same for kick 2. Simply duplicate it. And set the right macros. And because you can set every chain to zero, they won't play if we don't need them. So like this, we have two kicks uh, combined. Like this, we have three. And like this, we have four. And depending on how many samples you have in each chain, this gives you an uh, unlimited amount of possibilities. Last thing to do, of course, is add this now to a drum rack and then forward all the mappings from the instrument rack onto the drum rack like this yeah I still need to rename a few but you get the picture so you now have your drum rack and what we did here with the kick drum you could do something similar for uh, snare drum or um, hand claps so I think that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.